we have now all the elements we need to do the actual training of uh, feed forward the neural network. So what we want is to learn the parameter from the data and the most common way is to try fi first find the um, contribution of uh, the individual parameter to the error made by the network and try to reduce this contribution. So to understand if I change my parameter, how much this affect the, the error. And uh, um, this is nothing else than finding the derivative of the loss functions with respect to the parameter, okay? So in our very simple example, we have it, we can write it directly, the error uh, in terms of the uh, parameter. So here the error, the loss is equal to y minus uh, sign uh, of uh, um, the weight uh, and uh, as is written here. And uh, if you're interested in the w1 parameter, uh, we can simply compute the derivative of the error with respect to it. So how we do that? Well, we use the chain rule. So we compute the derivative of the error with uh, in respect to the parameter of interest and uh, we compute the derivative. So here is a squared, so two multiply by y minus uh, sine uh, uh, blah, blah, blah. Uh, multiplied by the derivative of the sine uh, is the cos cosine, so minus cosine again with everything inside. And then finally, because the v v1 is uh, uh, multiplied by x1, we multiply the product rule with uh, x1. So here, but I wrote here, is the derivative of the loss functions with respect to the parameter w1. When I put the numbers here in place of the parameter, the numerical numbers, I obtain a value of minus 0 0.188. What does it mean? It means that if I increase my parameter of a teeny factor, for example 0 0.01, well, my error should move of this amount by the factor that I move. So minus 0 0.01 by 0 0.188, and this is the result, okay? So at time, uh, uh, the first step, I compute my error with the parameter that I, I used and uh, my error was was this 0 0.00313. Then I do move v1 to 2.01, and I observe that when I move to 2.01, the output of the neural network is uh, change a little bit, become 0 0.56 uh, 561 instead of uh, minus 0 0.54 and the error lowered to be my 0 0.00154. So this is the error after I changed my parameter. And the difference, the difference is 0 0.00159. So it is uh, lower, but it's not so low, lower like the derivative indicated me, 0 0.0018. It is uh, it is a little bit less in absolute value. And the reason also, of course, is that the derivative is at the concept at the margin. While here, while it was small, it was still a significant uh, uh, step that we took. But that is the idea. So you find first the derivative and then you move your weight against the derivative to try to reduce your error. Now let's gonna take a few note, our important note out of this one. If you take back here the derivative here, we see that it depends 
on the level of the parameter itself as well as the other parameters. So taking zero as a, a starting point is almost always a bad idea because it leads to very small uh, um, derivatives and uh, is not a good idea. Uh, normally we sample, uh, we randomly uh, we randomly sample them. Uh, there are different techniques, but all involve uh, some random sample. The derivative, it depends also on the level of the data, both x and, uh, and, and y. And this is, it depends on the specific data for which we are uh, computing. And this will be important when we we'll speak about uh, the stochastic uh, gradient. While here we obtained uh, um, our, uh, um, our results analytically, we can imagine that apply the chain rule when we have different, uh, different uh, layers, it become problematic in the sense that become very long expression. However, there is nothing wrong with that. It's uh, an expression very easily to, to deal with with, uh, with a computer uh, because it just an remain an application of the chain rule. However, we still have one problem computationally so that if you have a very long expressions, it may seems it may take uh, uh, computationally becoming uh, problematic. However, we have some some tricks that we can employ. If you notice, the chain rule depends on the derive of the current value. We already said that it depends of the current value of uh, of uh, of x and uh, of the value of the of the layer, but it also depends on the derivative because we are using the chain rules of the layers that are on the right, close to the labels. So one technique is to simplify the computation to make it more efficiently is to make first a forward passage where we compute and we store the level at each layers. So we have the, la the levels here, the levels here, the levels here, the levels here, and so on. And, and then take a backward passage where we start computing the gradient, knowing that we already have now the, the, the forward passage, the, the levels at each layers. We start taking first the derivative of the loss function we respect to the last layers, so we just with respect to the est estimated uh, parameter, the estim sorry, the estimated value, sorry, the uh, derivative of the uh, loss function with respect to the predicted value, so here, and then we'll move this one backward by computing the derivative with respect to this layer and then when we have this one we can compute simply the derivative with respect to this layer and so on till going back to the first uh, uh, layer to the parameter of the first layer and this is called uh, the backward passage or is it so we first have a forward passage and then the derivatives are computed in a backward way from the last to the first uh, layer. And in this way, we can have uh, uh, efficient computation even if we have uh, many, many different layers. Now, because of the chain rule, it become obvious that we are multiplying the chain rule, we are multiplying all the derivative of the various passages of the various layers. So to, to arrive to compute the derivative here, we need to multiply the derivative of this one, of this one, of this one, and this one, and so on. So if these are small, we end up with very small derivatives and uh, with numerical uh, uh, in problems, because at the end we are, when we use computers, we are using uh, numbers that have a limited uh, uh, precision. The when uh, 
this derivative become very small, we say that uh, it, it vanish. And at the opposite, when he, the multiplication lead to very extreme big numbers, we may have the derivative to explode. And this is a serious problem in general with neural networks. And one of the reasons why nowadays we use the ReLU as an activation function. And in particular, the derivative of the arrow with respect to the various parameter is called the, the, the gradient. So we, are, we say that we have the problem of the gradient that is vanishing or exploding. So if the gradient with respect of a parameter is negative, like we had in our example, it means that we increase a little bit the parameter, we have a reduction of the arrow. And at the opposite, if it is positive, if we reduce the parameter, we should find a lower arrow. So one method to, to minimize this error is to have a gradient descendant uh, based algorithm that look for this and uh, look for the gradient. So you look for the gradient and then you move against the gradient, you move inter interactively the, the, the parameter against the, uh, the gradient. So the most algo basic algorithm is that at one given uh, step uh, t, so i is one particular parameter, could be the first parameter or the second parameter, one given parameter at time t, is equal to what it was at time t minus one minus the gradient of the arrow with respect to the parameter at the time t minus one that multiply lambda while lambda is a step that we make in again uh, the uh, the gradient and is known as the learning rate so in in the problem that we saw uh, above, if uh, we, we did move the, the weight of 0 0.01, but if instead of 0 0.01, we would have moved it of 0 0.1, we would have increased the error instead of reducing that. And uh, this make clear uh, the problem to find the, a good uh, uh, learning rate. And this again is one parameter that we can uh, that we can uh, uh, cross validate. Although I have to say that more modern algorithms they tend to self uh, um, self calibrate this parameter, so you don't uh, actually need to to look on on it. But this is a, a bit the idea of the of the uh, learning rate and the problem of the uh, wrong uh, choosing a wrong uh, learning rate. So here. We have the parameter that we want, and this is the error, overall error of the network. So the error depends on, on the parameter. And let's going to start here, and we have a small learning rate. If you have a smaller learning rate, so we are going to make one step here because the parameter is, uh, the, the gradient is negative, so we advance a little bit. And then we are here, so we look for the value of the functions here. Here again, the, uh, the gradient is negative, so we move a little bit and we continue to move. Here we move less and less, so these steps are uh, smaller than here because here the gradient started to be, uh, to be flat. And so when the gradient started to be flat in, in absolute term is lower, so also the step that we make uh, will be will be lower. But here we have two problems. We have one problem first that the steps are very small, so we need to make a lot of interaction, a lot of steps to, to move. But the second also is that we risk, like in this example, to get trapped to a local minima and not reaching the full uh, global uh, minima. At the opposite, if our gradient is our, sorry, if our learning rate is too big, so in this case, what would have, uh, have happened if we choose 0.1 instead of 0.01 in the numerical example above, we would have moved too much away 
and when we are looking for the value of the function at this point, we are here, and at this point is even more more deep, so we move even more, and we can see that instead of uh, arriving and uh, finding the minimum, the algorithm will diverge indefinitely. And uh, it's only when we have a good, uh, not too small, not too large learning rate, that we move and we finally arrive pretty quickly to our minimum. So again, if you use classical uh, gradient descent algorithm, we need to calibrate with other uh, algorithm, still a gradient uh, descent based, but, uh, but use other information like uh, the Adam uh, algorithm, that is the most used uh, at time of writing. This states self-tune and uh, luckily is something that we don't much have to, to worry about. One last note before we move to the convolutional neural networks is that we already noticed that the gradients depend on the level of the data that we have. And we can have two different extremes. On one extreme, we compute the gradient as the average of those computing all the data points. So we compute all, uh, all for all the data points a uh, gradient, we average, and we apply the optimization algorithm with this average gradient. On the other extremes, we s sample uh, randomly one rico record at a time, and uh, we compute the gradient, and with that gradient we move the algorithm, and then we go with the next, uh, uh, the next record. Well, we have a compromise. We, the compromise is to partition the data in what we call batches. And uh, each batches will have, for example, uh, eight or uh, 16 uh, or 32 records. And uh, we compute the average gradient of this batch and we run the updating algorithm uh, with this uh, average uh, gradient. So the approach to have one record at a time is the slowest, but also it is very um, sensitive to the presence of uh, outliers. And the other way, uh, if we take uh, the average of all our data, this is uh, faster because we have to run the update only once, uh, but we need most likely to run more, more epochs. It will take longer to, uh, to um, to find uh, a good solutions. And uh, uh, by epoch, we, I recall you that we mean the number of times that we pass through the wall training data. So if we have two epochs, means that our algorithm will met all the data uh, twice or at least twice on average. And also, this take the average of all the data, it takes more memory because we need to store the gradients computed with respect to all the records before we finally um, can uh, um, can average it. So at the end, the batch approach is a good compromise. And we normally set the number of batches to a multipliers of the number of threads in the machine because this step is often all parallelized. And uh, it's also another element that we can cross uh, uh, validate. And uh, in particular, when instead of taking the average of all the data, we take one data or a batch of data at the times, uh, the algorithm, uh, and we do it randomly, uh, the algorithm takes the name of uh, stochastic gradient descent.